here's what Jesus is doing. He's coming along to each religious idea, and here's what he's saying. Religion's over. This whole way that you've, you've lived, establishing ways to connect with God, building buildings, saying that there's land that's more holy than other land, understanding that my ethnicity is more important than somebody else's ethnicity because who I was born to makes me a person of God, the elevation of the family, the elevation of holy lands, the elevation of temples. Here's what he just said. It's all over. There is no more one piece of land that's better than somebody else's piece of land that you're supposed to worship and elevate. There's no ethnicity that transcends somebody else's ethnicity. The people of God are now who? People made up of every tribe and tongue and nation under heaven that worship the lamb. This is what the book of Revelation says. Jesus starts redefining everything. That's why he says to, remember in John chapter four, the woman at the well, she's like, I'm a Samaritan, you're a Jew. Are you telling me, you, you as a Jew, you say Jerusalem, that's the place to worship. That's the, that's the good place. That's the holy land. And Jesus looks at her and he says, woman? He's not being rude. He's just saying, he's just saying, woman? Right? It's the same thing he did in John two, where his mother said, go get more wine. He's woman, it's not my time. And I never want young guys to go home and talk like that to their mom. I just, woman? Give me a peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Jesus said it. What's up? What's up, lady? Here's what Jesus says to her. In John chapter 4, he says something staggering. As the last prophet, he says to this woman in verse 21, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You know what Jesus does as the last prophet? He says, there are no more holy cities, holy lands. There are no more ethnicities that are better than other ethnicities that somehow have a corner on the God market. Don't you understand? What I have done is I've come and I've created a new reality. Where, peop where family, where ethnicity, promises of restored land become promises of restored family. Jesus comes and redefines the family. I mean, it's fascinating in a, in a Middle Eastern culture, the family is everything, right? I've spent some time in Turkey. I've spent some time in Israel. Man, the family is everything. And yet in Jesus' time, he calls these disciples and the guy goes, I want to just make sure I want to go home for my dad's funeral first. And Jesus goes, man, let the dead bury the dead. You want to be my disciple don't worry about your father. In Mark 6, Jesus is in teaching in this class and, and all of these people are crowding the house so much so that his own mom can't get in. And so people, the, you know, she gets there and she's like, what's Jesus doing? What's this crowd? I'm getting nervous. And somebody says, oh, Jesus, by the way, read Mark chapter 6. Your mom and your brothers are outside and they want to see you and talk to you, right? It's family, it's family. And what does he do? He goes, who are my mother and my brothers? Anybody who does the will of God is my mother and my brother. Say, what's that? Woman. <laughs> He's redefining family, man. He's redefining holy. He's redefining temple. This is why he, he does the stone water jars. All right, we talked last week about John 2 where he does the, the temple with the whip. Just before that's the wedding where he turns the water into wine, right? What is that about? John tells us what these six stone water jars are for were for the Jewish purification rites. Here's what Jesus is saying. This old way of functioning, ritual, religion, where you built temples that God was in and you washed your hands because of food laws, all of these rituals, I, I'm the new wine, I'm superseding Judaism. I'm superseding everything that it means for. I'm eclipsing it. There's a new way. And I'm sh here to shut down religion altogether as the final prophet who's offering a new way of life. And so this, was, this is why they wanted to kill him. This is why they're like, wait a minute, I think, I think he spoke this parable against me. And over and over again, what he's saying has these massive implications that we rarely recognize.